Half an hour later, Paul alighted. There's that word alighted again, meaning arrived. From the Negley Avenue car and went slowly down one of the side streets off the main thoroughfare. Thoroughfare means road. And just to show you how important context is, this is not a car like with four wheels that you drive around. That's a street car. It was a highly respectable street. So how can you have respect for a street? What does it mean to be respectable? That means, in this context, it means like well-maintained, wealthy, Uh, nice. It's a nice street, a nice neighborhood where all the houses were exactly alike and where businessmen of moderate means. This has to do with how much money they have. If you have moderate means, it means you're okay, not super wealthy, but moderate mean means doing okay. But in this case, means means like money or actually more specifically, it really means wealth. So, all right, money wealth right there moderate means not too much not too little begot is like a biblical word which means to uh we'd say like have children but uh, in this case since we're talking about business men we would say fathered fathered and reared to rear a large family is to raise a large family. Fathered really means like to the, if you, be, if you have been begotten, that basically means born. And then after you're born, hopefully somebody is trying to raise you. Large families of children, all of whom went to Sabbath school, which is Saturday school and learned the shorter catechism and were interested in arithmetic. Sabbath is Sunday school, I guess, is what they're talking about, even though Sabbath is this Saturday. There's some dis dispute as Sabbath means the sixth day of the week or the seventh day of the week. Rest on the Sabbath. I think Christians regard that as Sunday. I believe that Jews regard it as Saturday. I could be wrong. And learn the shorter catechism. Catechism is religious. And I don't know if that is only used by Christian or if it's any religion, but in this case, I think he's talking about Christian catechism. And she is. And we're interested in arithmetic, all of whom were as exactly alike as their homes and have a piece with the monotony, mono meaning one. Monotony means something that like never changes. Boring. Monotony in which they lived. Paul never went up Cordelia Street without a shudder. Shudder is a little shake. Without a shudder. A little shake or a shake or a shiver of loathing. Loathing is such a great word. It's like more than hatred. It's like hatred plus disgust equals loathing. Hate plus disgust. His home was next to the house of the Cumberland minister. He approached it tonight with a nerveless sense of defeat. A hopeless feeling of sinking back forever into ugliness and commonness that he had always had when he came home. The moment he turned into Cordelia Street, he felt the waters close above his head. He felt the waters close above his head, which is both a very powerful image and an excellent use of metaphor. After each of these orgies of living, and here orgies means basically like out of control. 
uh, kind of like an out of control indulgence. He experienced all the physical depression which follows a debauch. A debauch is like if you drink too much, maybe even eat too much or just do anything to excess. Kind of it goes with out of control indulgence. A debauch is also an out of control indulgence. So basically those things mean the same thing. And I would say like drink, eat. The loathing of respectable beds, of common food, of a house permeated, which means penetrated. In this case, kitchen odors means a smell. Kind of like a smell can permeate. So. Uh, permeated which means like mm -hmm. penetrated in this case is like smell so in this case permeated permeated by kitchen odors just means that it smelled like food in his house a shuddering repulsion for the flavorless Repulsion is like repulsive, like repulse, like repulsed. It's like it, you, you, like it pushes you away. He feels like he's pushed away by the feeling of all this. It pushes him away. A shuddering impulsion for the flavorless, colorless mass of everyday existence. Existence meaning life. Uh, poor Paul. A morbid desire for cool things and soft lights and fresh flowers. A morbid means kind of like dark, which is an interesting juxtaposition. Morbid desire for cool things. These are all cool, soft, fresh. These are light things. Not normally something we'd associate with morbid. What's morbid is usually like a funeral home. It's a morbid that's an interesting use of a morbid desire. The nearer he approached the house, the more absolutely unequal Paul felt to the sight of it all, his ugly sleeping chamber, which is a very old word for bedroom. A chamber is a room. Poe always talked of chambers in a house instead of rooms, sleeping chambers. The cold bathroom with the grimy zinc tub a cracked mirror, the dripping spigots. This is a lot like Poe here, this whole section. Like a haunted house. Except it's not really haunted at all. It's just haunted by his feelings of how much he hates it. Spigots are also like called taps. Water faucets. This is what we have in English. We have spigots. Taps are probably from our... Uh, more Germanic influence that we have. But that's the tough thing about English is we've got like three, four, five words for the same thing. Faucets, I'm, I'm pretty sure is coming from French. His father, at the top of the stairs, his hairy legs sticking out from his nightshirt, his feet thrust into carpet slippers. He was so much later than usual that there would certainly be inquiries and reproaches. Inquiries are questions. Reproaches is criticism or like a consequence. Or like, a, yeah, he's gonna be in trouble. Paul stopped short before the door. He felt that he could not be accosted. Accosted means basically like bothered and attacked. Poor Paul. And there's no mom at home to help. By his father tonight, that he could not toss again on that miserable bed. Toss means he's not sleeping very well. So toss sleep, but it means not sleeping, you know, like tossing and turning. Mm -hmm. 
toss again on that miserable bed. He would not go in. He would tell his father that he had no car fare, and it was raining so hard he had gone home with one of the boys and stayed all night. Meanwhile, he was wet and cold. He went around to the back of the house and tried one of the basement windows, found it open, raised it cautiously, and scrambled down the cellar wall to the floor. There he stood, holding his breath, terrified by the noise he had made. But the floor above him was silent, and there was no creak on the stairs. He found a soap box, which back in the day was kind of like a small, like you think of like a cardboard box these days. It was made of wood. And carried it over to the soft ring of light that streamed. Here's light can stream. Basically, it's like a glow of light coming from the furnace door and sat down. He was horribly afraid of rats, so he did not try to sleep, but sat looking distrustfully at the dark, still terrified lest he might have awakened his father, still terrified that he might. It's like, it's like that, except for it has a negative connotation. So he was still terrified that he might have awakened his father would be exactly right. But it's all, but it's almost like unless. So it's interesting, we don't really use that word anymore, lest. In such reactions, after one of the experiences which made days and nights out of the dreary blanks of the calendar, when his senses were deadened, Paul's head was always singularly clear. This sentence seems important. Suppose his father had heard him getting in at the window and had come down and shot him for a burglar. Then again, suppose his father had come down, pistol in hand, and had cried out in time, and he had cried out in time to save himself, and his father had been horrified to think how he had nearly killed him. Then again, suppose a day should come when his father would remember that night and wish there had been no warning cry, and stay his hand. With this last supposition, a supposition is like a theory, you know, to suppose. It's like a theory. Uh, it's not necessarily true, you know. It's like, the, you know, to suppose. I suppose it's because. Paul entertained himself until daybreak. Oh, poor Paul, what a mess. The following Sunday was fine. The sodden November chill. Sodden usually means like wet. Not sudden, but sodden. Was broken by the last flash of autumnal summer. Autumnal means like fall, like autumn. That means like like, I'll just say like fall. Autumnal summer. In the morning, Paul had to go to church and Sabbath school as always. On seasonable Sunday afternoons, the burgers of Cordelia Street, which it means the people who live there, but burger is like a, you know, like well, you know, like these, these moderate businessmen type people, somewhat affluent. I'll just say somewhat affluent or somewhat rich, well-to-do of Cordelia Street usually sat out on their front stoops. That's funny that that was in quotation marks. And talked to their neighbors on the next stoop and called to those across the street in neighborly fashion. The men sat, plac sat placidly, means like peacefully. Placid means peacefully, peace. on gay cushions placed upon the steps that led down to the sidewalk while the women in their Sunday waists, I'm guessing this is like a, some kind of house coat or something like that, sat in rockers on the cramped porches, pretending to be greatly at their ease. 
There's a lot of, this is, this is a great story. The children played in the streets. There were so many of them that the place resembled the recreation grounds of a kindergarten. The men on the steps, all in their shirt sleeves, their vests unbuttoned, sat with their legs well apart, their stomachs comfortably protruding. To protrude is to stick out. And talked of the prices of things or told anecdotes. Anecdote is a word you have to know. Have to know. An anecdote is like a little story. Of the <laughs> sagacity. I don't know what that is, but I don't think it's good. I'm going to put it in quotation marks here. It could be wrong. Sagacious and sagacity of their various chiefs and overlords. They occasionally looked over the multitude. Multitude just means many. Multitude. Many. Of squabbling children. Arguing, fighting, talking, you know, like making noise. Not I don't think they mean that necessarily fighting, but to squabble is to argue. So I just say squabbling, argue, kind of loud children. Squabbling children listened affectionately to their high-pitched nasal voices, smiling to see their own proclivities. Proclivity is a great word. Basically bad habits. Bad habits produced in their offspring and interspersed, which means inter, like inside of their legends of the Iron Kings with remarks about their son's progress at school. Interspersed means like uh, went back and forth or like inter, like uh, divided up. Interspersed is like uh, uh, switched back and forth. In this case, it means exactly switched back and forth. Switch back and forth between. Switched between. Would also work if you just said switch between. B -T -W. Switch between. Their legends of the Iron Kings with remarks about their son's progress at school, their grades in arithmetic, and the amounts they have saved in their toy banks. On this last Sunday of November, Paul sat all the afternoon on the lowest step of his stoop, staring into the street while... His sisters in the rockers were talking to the minister's daughters next door about how many shirt waists they had made in the last week. Those are like, you know, clothes like they had been making clothes. And how many waffles someone had eaten at the last church supper. When the weather was warm and his father was in a particularly jovial, which means fun-loving, frame of mind, the girls made lemonade, which was always brought out in a red glass pitcher, ornamented with forget-me-nots in blue enamel. Ornamented means decorated. That spells decorated right there. The girls thought very fine, and the neighbors joked about the suspicious color of the pitcher. <laughs> 